Now the IEP meeting, who's gonna come? Well, the teacher's gonna come, special ed and general. The most important person next to the student? Parent, Parent okay, then the student. Okay, um, the speech therapist, if they have a speech therapist, an occupational therapist, if they have an occupational therapist, um, and an outside agency that your child might be working with. Now, let me tell you this. The school cannot force the outside agency to come to the meeting. But if the school comes back to you and says, we can't get such and such agency to come that you suggested, what do you say to them? Who can you get me? You don't just let them off the hook. It used to be that if they were called an agency and that agency couldn't come, well, then you were stuck without an agency. The agency is a critical, if, if, if it be, um, you'll excuse me, Bob, if, if it's CVAC, if it's, um, what do they have on the, on the west side? Uh, Polaris. Polaris. Um, if it's BVR, if it's MRDD, Whoever the agency you are planning to work with on transitioning your child out, because the eventual goal is, remember, to go out, get a job, have a place to live, etc. All right? You need an agency there that's going to help guide you on what's available. Do you know what's available? Uh, no, no. I, and I'm sure most people don't. That's one of the reasons we have. Um, LiveSpecial.com is because there are a lot of agencies on there that can help you. You have to decide and you have to look around and see which agency. The school may give you suggestions. The school may have agencies. They should have a vocational trainer. Um, they should have a, um, an indep independent job worker who works with some of the kids with special needs who get part-time jobs before school, school goes out. You need those people to be there, and you cannot wait until April of the year that they're ready to leave education to meet with these people, okay? Now, if your child's staying on for till they're 21, then you have all of those years to work with an agency that will be involved in all the transitioning. If your child is going to college, well, do you need any transition services for college? Yeah, you sure do, you sure do. Where, where is your child? Does he need guidance on where to go to, to college? And I say, certainly think he needs to meet with the uh, guidance counselor more than once a year. Um, where is he applying? Does he need help with his applications? Okay, so that child will have agencies involved earlier because that child is planning to graduate at AT. The different agencies like CVAC and Polaris will stay with you until your child is 21. What happens at 21? They age out, you're done, okay, you're done. Um, there's no more education, and you want them to be able to be ready to step out if they're gonna live on their own, to know how to do certain life skills, you want them to know if they're gonna have a job, do they need to learn how to pay bills and write a checkbook, that's all transition, all transition. And for each disability and each individual child, the transition plan will look different start at a different time and take different have different components. Okay, so we know who's coming to the IEP meeting. In, an, in addition, coming to the IEP meeting is the child. Now remember, you have prepared for this meeting, okay? You're not going into this meeting without having done all the things that we talked about. Talking to your child, making sure the assessments are done. If it's your initial meeting for transition, then what are you gonna to outline to them if it's the first meeting when your child is 16? You're gonna tell them what you want. You're gonna tell them you need assessments. You're going to tell them that you need um, uh, somebody from an outside agency. You're going to tell them all of that. What tests are they suggesting for your child? And you're setting it up to keep it going until your child either graduates and goes on at 18 or until your child goes on until he's 21 and he or she ages out of the program. Outside agencies, I cannot stress enough, are a, one of the prime things that you have to connect because they will eventually help you make the placement for children who are going to be looking for jobs and wanting to work. And I think if any of you are in the throes of um, transition now, you will know that the lower functioning children have more of a problem than the higher functioning children. There are just not enough places around for lower functioning kids. Nobody should be on a waiting list in my world.
but I know that that doesn't exist, that there are waiting lists to get into programs. The earlier you get in, the less likely you are to be on a waiting list. You can bring anybody you want to the IEP meeting. In fact, I, it's not any different than any, any other part of the IEP. You can bring your lawyer if you want a lawyer. You can bring your, your friend. You can bring Aunt Tilly. I don't care who you bring. Don't go alone, okay? And I need to say to all the women in the room that it is really most helpful when fathers show up. I'm still trying to figure out why, but that's what, that's the truth of the matter. Okay. Do not go along. Okay, the transition meeting. Are we talking, how many transition meetings are we having? Well, how many IEP meetings do you have every year? I love to tell my audiences, okay, if you wish and if you think it is reasonable, you may have an IEP meeting every single day of the school year, okay? I don't recommend it, they'll get sick of you, but that is your right. Who can call the IEP meeting? I'm going to go back to some basics here. Who, do, who calls the IEP meeting? Anybody. How do you call an IEP meeting? In writing. In writing, you ask for an IEP meeting. Who do you copy on the request for an IEP meeting? Everybody. Everybody that's going to be at the IEP meeting. You and I always would co copy the superintendent because they would want to know if I was in the building. That, that um, so I always, I always copy the superintendent. I never saw them. I never saw the superintendent. They never came to say hello, but th they wanted to know if I was in the building. Okay. You're going to talk about what? Community services as they relate to instruction, employment, and life skills. You're going to talk about adult services and what is available. Um, you're gonna have an outside agency. You're gonna talk about integrated employment and supported employment. Do you know what integrated employment is and supported employment is? If you don't, you need to find out what it is. Um, you're gonna talk about, could I define, <laughs> sure. Um, integrated employment is where you work with like with anybody else in any type of regular job. Supported employment is where you may need a coach, you may need an aide, or some like somebody like that to work with you. Now, don't misunderstand me. I don't expect this all to be in place on the first day that your child turns 16. What I'm telling you is this is what you need and this is where you need to begin. And you cannot wait until the child is 18. Okay. You're going to talk about independent living. Some schools send children to special places to learn independent living. If they're going to live in an apartment by themselves, they have to know how to wash clothes. Did you know how to wash clothes before you went to college? No, I didn't. <laughs> okay. And my mother had to teach me. So she showed me how to use the washing machine. These kids need to know the same thing. They need to know how to, you know, if they need something, where do they go to buy it? Do they have to write a check? Are they going to have to pay rent? That's all part of independent living. You may, a, a student may opt out of an independent living goal and objective. But if they do, the IEP team must say why on the IEP. The IEP is the document that will tell you what you're going to get from the time the child first becomes eligible until he ages out or graduates. And I'm going to tell you, if it's not on the IEP, you have no guarantee whatsoever that you're going to get what somebody says, don't worry about it, we'll do it. And I don't think that person doesn't mean well. I do think that person does mean well. But what do we all do when we get busy? Forget. We forget or we drop off what we can't do or what we don't have to do, okay? When we look for ways to, to um, and, and don't get me wrong, I, I was a teacher. I have a lot of teacher friends. There are wonderful, wonderful teachers, speech therapists, everybody. But you know, not everybody does as good a job as somebody else. And, and you need to have everything in writing. 